Hi everyone, welcome back to Crochet Rocks and to another beginner's class um, in my uh, little course. Um, now I do have a right-handed and a left-handed version, so um, I always put a link to the other one. So if you're in the right-handed, you'll find a link to the left-handed and vice versa, just pop up along the top. So you can always click into that. Um, I know many of you like to watch both of my videos, um, but that's that's lovely. Thank you very much for that. So this one is all about increasing and decreasing. And I'm going to, I've made some swatches and I've got one for each of the stitches um, that we predominantly use and that I have also done um, tutorials for in this beginner's course. And this one is the UK double crochet or a single crochet in the US. And we've also got one, this yellow one is a half treble, which is a half double. And this is our treble, which of course in the US is a double crochet. If that isn't confusing, I don't know what is, but um, I always mention them both in my tutorials. So it um, is clear for everyone. Okay, so the, the method of increasing and decreasing is um it varies it's not quite the same for each stitch and i'll show you what i mean um now sometimes you'll be asked to increase in the middle of a row but quite often when you're doing something it might be at the end of a row or the beginning of a row so i'm going to show you a few rows of each one and and show you exactly how we do it um if you haven't already, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. And hopefully you'll be informed when new videos pop up. So this is just a little swatch um, that I made earlier. And it is just 15 stitches. And um, I'm using a, this is just a DK with a four millimeter hook. But, you know, it's just to show you. Okay, so just a little note on keeping your edges nice and straight i've been asked um for tips on how to do that now if you watch my beginners swatches when i first showed you these stitches i showed you how i do my edges and that always keeps them nice and straight so if you watch those stitches i know some of you might not want to because you think you you've known those stitches already but that's how um, I keep my edges nice and straight. So anyway, um, I do a chain. Have I already done the chain? No. Do a chain and I cinch it right down so I don't see it. I don't want to see that and have it confused with a stitch at all. And then I make sure the loop that's on my hook is nice and loose. We don't want it tight. So we go into our first stitch as this is the UK um, double crochet, which is a single in the US. So we just do our stitch in the first one and we want to make sure it's not tight because that way we will see where that stitch is so we just do one in there now sometimes it will ask you to increase your first stitch or it might ask you to increase into the second stitch that just gives a bit of a cleaner line than if you did two in this stitch so we'll show you by doing that we'll do two in this stitch and then we'll do one in each one all the way to the end which can be a little bit boring just watching me do that so I'll pause it and I'll catch up with you when I get to the end because I do have a few other swatches to show you and um, it might get a bit tedious for you okay so I've gone in each one now like I said to you at the beginning you might be asked to increase this stitch which is the second to the end or into the last stitch, which is this one. So we'll do our two in the last stitch. Now some patterns will say to increase on that round and then to do one row of normal going in one in each. But if it asks you to increase at the beginning of each row, then that's what we do. So we're going to do our chain, cinch it down. Now this is our first stitch here. And it's going to look very odd. So we'll go into this one and we'll do our increase. This is what happens when you increase every single row. And again, we just do one in each of these. Now remember a pattern that you're using might ask you to increase every 
fifth stitch or every sixth or whatever. So that is what we do to increase anyway. We just do two stitches in the one space, which is nice and simple. Can't really go wrong with that. You know what you're doing making the stitches. So you just do another one. So I might as well just carry on as I've been talking. I'm almost at the end. And after a few rounds, you'll see that it does start to um, bow out. Okay, so we've just got our last one. And we're going to do our increase. I need to pull out some yarn. I thought I had lots pulled out, but I was wrong. So I do my second one. Okay, so I'll take that out. And as you can see, it's now started to go outwards. And if we carried on, it would just carry on going outwards and outwards and outwards. Because it's only um, very small, we'll do another couple of rows and then we'll look at it. So there we are. It's very difficult to see. So this one here is your first stitch. I always, if I get confused, go in from the back like that and then I know. So I'm going to pull it up so it's not confusing when I get to the end where my stitch is and do my increase in the first stitch and we'll carry on. I'll pause it this time and I'll catch up with you when I get to the other end. Okay, nearly there. So there's one stitch. And there's our last one. Now, as you can see, it's getting very kind of, it's really splaying out and it's quite a sharp um, what's the word? angle. That's the word. It's quite a sharp angle because we are doing two at each end of both rows. So that's why some patterns will say increase on the last stitch of every row. So you'll get an increase on the end of this one and an increase on the end, and it's more gradual. So that's what sometimes that you get. So um, now I'm going to do my chain and cinch it right down, and I'm gonna turn it, um, and I'm gonna show you a, um, a decrease. But before I do, I'm just gonna do one in every stitch along uh, for a couple of rows so that it, we can see the difference between our increases and our decreases. We need to get like a little line between them. So I'm going to pause the video while I do a couple of rows of just doing one in each for the time being. Okay, so as you can see, we have our, well, it looks a bit like a funnel going on. So um, I've increased and I've done um, two rows um, so that it the increases have kind of stopped and it's more straightforward to see. So here we are, we're at the end and I'm going to do my one chain and cinch it right down. Um, some people don't do that. They just, or sometimes I don't do that. I'll just make my first stitch a bit longer, but I like to, I don't know why, just finish off that stitch so it's not affected. So if we were to then decrease at the beginning of this row and the end of this row, what we do with this particular stitch, because it is the smallest stitch, it's a UK double or a single in the US, um, we just go into our stitch as normal and pull up our loop. Then we go into the next stitch and pull up a loop and we yarn over and pull through all three of them. So we've now made those two stitches into one. And now we're going to go all the way to the end, um, doing one in each. Remember this um, decrease might come up at any point in the row, depending on the pattern that you're using, or at just one end of the row, like the increase could be at one end of the row. Usually they're at the end if you're doing um, decreasing or increasing, but I'm showing you at each end anyway, just to sort of give you more experience of what it will look like. <clears throat> I won't bother with pausing it because we're almost there. And I need to pull more yarn. It's amazing, just a little bit of um, increasing 
made all those stitches. Okay, so we're now at the end. We're going to do the same thing. Stitch in that one. And a stitch in that one and pull through all three, bringing them together. Now we turn our work and we're going to do our chain, cinch it down and we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to go into the first stitch and pull up a loop, into the second stitch and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through all three of them. And then we're just going to go on and do one in each of our stitches. I'm going to pause it this time because it will be boring just watching me go all the way to the end. Okay, so we're at the end. We're going to do the same thing. One in the first stitch, one in the next stitch, yarn over, pull through all three. And one chain and cinch it. We'll do one more decrease row. So again, nice loop so that you don't confuse it. Pull up, pull up through all three. And one in each stitch along. It should be getting less now, so it might not be such a long wait to get to the end. Looks like we've made ears at the edge of our work on this one. Which gives you a bit of an idea what you can make with your just basic stitches with a bit of shaping. So we've got one more to do and then we're going to do our increase. Now remember, oh sorry, decrease, what I'm talking about. Remember you might not be asked to do those at the front and back of each row. So there you go, you're getting a circular um, kind of, you see what I mean? We've got ears. Now, if um, you were going around this with maybe a row of UK doubles or single crochet, that would clean up the edges or if you were sewing them together. So let me just show you when it comes to a pattern then, if this would be, let's see if you can hear my cat meow. Um, in the US, it would be a single crochet two together. In the UK, it's a double crochet two together. And that's what it would look like. So I'm going to pause the video for a second and because that's uh, that stitch, I'm going to clear the stuff away and I'm going to show you how to do it with um, the half treble in the UK, which is a half double in the US. Hi, so I'm back with my next swatch, which is the half treble UK, half double US. So I'm at the end of the row. I'm just going to do that and cinch it down now sometimes you'll be told to chain two, chain one, um, and all that, but <laughs> this is not the way I work. I don't um, have those ugly baggy chains at the end. So again, I make sure my loop isn't tight on my hook so I can see my stitch. Now I have over the years seen two ways of doing this and I've done it a third way. So I'm gonna show you each and then you can decide which one you think looks better. So we're going to yarn over and go into the first stitch because with all small stitches, we go into this stitch. Now, one of the methods is to yarn over and pull through two, yarn over, go into the next stitch and yarn over and pull up the loop. So you have four on your hook and then you yarn over and pull through all four. So you've in effect made those two stitches there and there into one stitch there. So I will show you again, yarn over, go into the stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two of them, leaving two, yarn over, go into the next one, yarn over and pull up your loop, you've got four, yarn over and pull through all four. So that's one method and I'm doing them because otherwise it's gonna get very small that's one method. The other is to yarn over, go into your first stitch and pull up a loop. So you've got three on your hook. Yarn over, go into the next stitch and pull up a loop. So you now have five 
on your hook and you yarn over and pull through all five. I'll do it again with you. Yarn over, go into the first one and yarn over and pull up the loop. Yarn over, go into the next one. Yarn over and pull up the loop. Five on your hook, yarn over, pull through all five. So there you are, you've made those two stitches into one. So altogether those are four stitches and now you can see there are just two left. Now for the longest time, I didn't like either of those. Sometimes I do, depends what I'm making. If I'm making a pair of baby booties and I want a nice big fat stitch to not make it look like there's not a big gap, I'll use that second method. But if it's quite a neat little piece of work and I don't want a big bulky what looks like a almost a puff stitch, I have been known to yarn over and pull up a loop, go into my next stitch and pull up a loop. And I have four on my hook, sorry, I'll show you. Four on my hook, yarn over and pull through all four. Now, can you see what a difference that makes? It's um, a much smaller stitch. I'll show you again. Yarn over, go into the stitch and pull up a loop as usual. But I don't yarn over, I just pop into the next one and pull up another loop, yarn over, pull through all four. And as you can see, it's smaller. It still pulls those two stitches together. You still end up with two become one, as the Spice Girls would say. But it's not such a bulky stitch, and that is completely up to you which method you want to use. I've seen both on YouTube used. So the first one again, yarn over, go into the stitch and pull up your loop. So you've got three. Yarn over, go into the stitch, pull up your loop. And there you are. You've got your five hook, your loops on your hook, not hooks on your loop, but your five loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through all three. Do them side by side this time. We can get and contrast them. So we'll do a normal one in between. Okay, so our next one is to yarn over, go into that stitch and pull up our loop, yarn over and go through two, yarn over, go back into that next stitch and pull up your loop. So you've got four on your hook, yarn over and pull through the four. We'll do one normal one in between the next two. And now my one, yarn over into the stitch, pull up a loop, pop it into the next stitch, pull up your loop, yarn over, go through all of them. Now we'll just do a couple of normal ones and see what you think when we look at them. There you go. This one, which is my method, don't want to blow my own trumpet or anything, but it's the far less kind of intrusive one to your work. It is hard to see. Let's see if I can zoom. So it's kind of the least bulky and the least obvious. Whereas the first one there creates this big kind of bulky knot of them. And then the second one least, less, but it kind of makes it a tad taller because you've gone through two. Whereas mine, my own little invention there, hardly see it. So that's what I prefer to do. But like I said, it does depend on the work that I'm doing. So let's undo them. Let's undo them all. If I'm making baby booties, the first one makes a much fatter stitch. And that's what you might need when you're trying to hide the fact that you're shaping around that part of the foot. Oh, I'm really zoomed. Let's get out. Big, big hand. Sorry about that. So, you know, if your foot goes down like that and the instep and then it leads to where the toes are, you might be doing a decrease if this was a foot around that part and you don't want it to look really holy. So to increase our half treble or half double, it's very simple. You just do two in the same stitch. That's all you do. And like with the other, the um, UK double US single, quite often you will do it just at the end of one row. 
or in the middle, you might be asked to increase every so often. So it's just a case of doing two in one stitch and you have increased. Increasing is the easy one. You just do two in one stitch, but it's, um, and it's not so easy decreasing, but I'm going to leave it completely up to you which method that you prefer for which whatever you're making. So if you're making something that's like this, I think um, if you're if you don't want it to look absolutely obvious, my way hardly notices. Just saying. Anyway, that's increasing and decreasing on a half treble round. I didn't do a big swatch this time because there are lots to show you. I'll show you one more time and we'll see if we can work out what you think is best. So the normal method, three loops on the hook, yarn over into the next, another two loops on the hook, yarn over and pull through all of them. And there you have what looks like a bit of a start of a star stitch. It's kind of got lots of lines coming off it. Let's do the other method. Three loops on the hook, pull through two. So you've already kind of made your stitch taller. Yarn over into the next one, pull up a loop, through all four. And it's not a lot of difference between this one and this one. I think this one looks bigger than that one because you've gone through the two. My method, pull up your loop as normal, pop it in the next one, yarn over and pull up a loop. You've got four and just pull through all of them. I prefer this one for a flat piece of work and these two, both of them would work if you're trying to decrease on, on the shoe area. So that is with the half treble, half double in the US. So that one then, we are in the UK, half treble two together. That is an R. In the US, half double crochet two together. That's how it's written. So then we just have one more swatch to do. I'm just going to pause it then, clear this away, and I'll come back to you with your treble crochet, which is a double in the US. Okay, so I'm back again, this time with the treble crochet UK or double crochet in the US. So let's just pop this down a little bit. Um, now I'm hoping this yarn is easy to see because it is a bright pink, fuchsia pink. Um, now we start always with our two chain on our um, treble rows. So if we were to um, be doing this at the end of each row, which is what it normally asks for, then we would go all the way along and do our in, uh, decrease at the end. But if you had to do it at the beginning of your row, you might chain one and you yarn over and go into your first stitch. So normally speaking, when we're doing a treble row, we will not go into that first stitch, we'll go into the second stitch because those two chain count as our first stitch. Some people will tell you to do three chain, but for me that makes them too high, they're perfect height. So, okay. If it was asking you to do it in the first stitch, then this is how I would do that. I would chain one and I'd yarn over, I'd go into my first stitch and I'd yarn over and pull up a loop as if I'm going to do a treble crochet or a double US and I've got three loops on the hook and I would pull through my first two as normal and then yarn over and then we're going to go into the next stitch along, yarn over and pull up a loop. So we've got four now on our hook. And we're going to yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through all three. So we've made those two stitches into one. Just like the Spice Girls, two become one again. I'll show you one more time on this particular end. 
we yarn over, we go into the next stitch and we pull up our loop. Just as normal, we go through two by yarning over, pulling through two. Then we're going to go into this stitch, we're going to yarn over, go into the next one, yarn over and pull up the loop. So we have four on our hook and we yarn over and pull through two, leaving those three. So we've got this stitch and this stitch on our hook and the previous. And we're going to pull through all three. So it pulls all two of those into the one stitch. We'll do it again. Yarn over, into the next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two of them. Just the same as you start the usual UK treble US double. Now we're going to yarn over, go into the next one with those still on our hook, yarn over and pull up the loop. So we have four, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over and pull through the three. So now we've got three stitches where we had six and you can see it's pulling them together. So that's possibly the easiest of all decreases. Um, I think so anyway, I think that's the most easiest one to remember because it's very similar to the stitch that you, you know um, because we use it all the time. So if we were to increase then, let's get it back to how it should have been. Okay, so we're gonna turn over and we're gonna do our two chain, which would start our row, which would count as our first stitch. If we were increasing, we'd just simply go into the same stitch so that we would have two at the start. And we've increased one, and then we just go into each one and if the pattern said to increase in the middle of a row or after every five stitches, we just simply do two in the same space and we increase. And that is ever so simple as well, isn't it? Much easier than trying to remember how to do the others. But that that's nice and simple. So we'll decrease again, we yarn over, we're gonna go into our next stitch. We're gonna yarn over and pull up the loop yarn over and pull through two, leaving two on our hook from that stitch, yarn over, go into the next one, yarn over and pull up the loop, yarn over and go through two. And they are sitting there all nice together, yarn over, pull through all three, and you've put them together. So that is as simple as it gets. So seeing those two written down is in the UK treble, two together or in the US double crochet two together and that's also called um, a double de double crochet decrease treble co crochet decrease uh, depending on which side of the pond you live and so you might hear those stitches called um, a double crochet decrease a half treble crochet decrease um, a treble crochet decrease. So they, they're also called a decrease or treble two together, double crochet two together. The only thing that I will say to you learners is you do need to be careful when you start watching people on YouTube that they are, uh, that you know what terms they're using and that you know if it's a US pattern and they're saying to you uh, double crochet two together or double crochet they're actually meaning a UK treble. So make sure that you have a good kind of chart written down, either write your own so that I always find if I write my own things, I remember them better than if I just look at somebody else's chart. So I would put it in the back of my little book, my diary, whatever I've got going, just write them down and you won't go far wrong because writing it down aids your memory. So that's that's increasing and decreasing. I hope it's been clear. And if you have any questions, by all means, pop them in the uh, comment section below because I always do read them. So thank you for watching. Stay safe, everyone. Take care and I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.